Flowers are blooming all over, blooming all over Hawaii. They smell so sweet, they are creeping, they'll thrill you through and through. Hyena, Hyena, they pack a lot of That was lovely. And it's so true. Even though it's approaching winter, the flowers are blooming all yeah. over Hawaii. Yes. Yeah. Harvest. What a blessing. Actually. So um, Mahina and Christy, that's who you folks were just hearing. And um, before your next song, I'm going to ask if you could move your apparatus closer to the Lauhala mat so that we you know, oh, aren't okay. getting that okay. glare behind you. Okay, okay thank you. Um, and uh, my name is Pasha McGregor. I'm the facilitator this morning. We thought our speaker was going to be Debbie Hecht speaking on my longest journey, the 16 inches from my head to my heart. And this would have, we were so looking forward to it. It was would have been her first time speaking for New Thought Center, and unfortunately, um, she uh, had to postpone because her physical heart needed some TLC. Uh, she um, is probably going to be having heart surgery in California this week. So uh, we we are sending her our very best and we'll be doing a healing prayer a little later to um, kind of concentrate the energies in support of her healing. So the first thing on the program is our reading from Science of Mind magazine. I'm going to invite Annie Bertram up to uh, do the honors. Thank you, Pasha. This reading is all about trusting life. Sometimes you have to stop and think, regroup and regather yourself and realize how lucky you are to still be living and to still be breathing and still be able to even have a chance. And that was written by a person named Ciara. We need to stop denying the nature of the universe if we have arrived at the point where we have complete confidence in its perfect action, in its ability to create, maintain, and to sustain life within us today, to supply us with all our needs, then that is what it will do for us tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and on into the future. And that was written by Ernest Holmes. Okay, here it comes. The single most significant piece of spiritual advice I have ever received. 
Are you ready? Stop complaining. Complaining is the hallmark of victim consciousness. This does not mean we deny ourselves challenges and don't work to overcome obstacles. It does not mean we don't have down days or difficult times. It does not mean we don't see things in the world that need to be healed or lifted into a higher state of consciousness. What it does mean is that we stop endlessly ragging on about people, events, and circumstances. It means that we spend more time praising what is working, lifting up those around us and speaking for the possibility and outcomes we desire. What we focus on grows. Focusing on how the universe supports life and moves forward, evolving into higher consciousness, aligns us with the spiritual truth. This moves us into a higher vibration, a deeper trust, and greater demonstrations. And here's the affirmation. If you could repeat after me, I have confidence in life. I have confidence in life. I trust the universe. I trust the universe. I look for the good and praise it. For the good and praise it. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. That was great. I had read it to myself earlier, but somehow hearing it in another person's voice, it's, it's just more powerful. So as I mentioned, our, um, our scheduled speaker um, is facing a health challenge. And I told her we would do a collective prayer on her behalf with her consent and she was accepted with great enthusiasm. Um, so I then invited Pomaika uh, Ikulon to lead the prayer because she's so great at that. You know, she's, she's a, she was trained as a religious science practitioner and when she prays, it's just like so flowing and, uh, but she's done mighty work uh, in service to her little child faith this week and needed this morning to kind of rest and recharge at home. Um, so, Homai, if you're there watching us in your PJs, well done. And I, I also took that as a signal, well, okay, God wants me to realize that I can do this too. But I have a... a an aid. I'll show it to you just a second. So my first um, role in the New Thought community was as Sunday school teacher. And this was a project that we often would do around this time of year, having the children trace their hands, and then you can kind of see it as a turkey. Uh, but this this one's a little different. Um, each finger or thumb is used to represent a part of the new thought special way of praying called treatment. And I'm going to move it up close to the uh, screen in a minute so the live stream people can see it. But it's going to help me remember so I don't skip any parts. Okay, so please join in consciousness as I go through the steps of this special prayer. So the first step is the recognition of God. On the diagram, it just says God is. So whatever you call it, bring to mind that that higher power called by many names or no name. One of our beloved New Thought elders, uh, Morty Breyer, used the term Hashem, which in Hebrew just means the name, based on the idea that it's so sacred you really can't name it or can't, or can't say the name. So let that fill you, that consciousness of that, higher power 
all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing, complete love without limits. The second step is to unify with that consciousness. We are one with that. We are one in essence. And because of that, we are also unified with every other person holding that consciousness, with nature, with spirits, instruments, flute, oboe, whatever is your favorite instrument. So that energy of the, the one can come through each of us and all of us. And in that expanded space, in that unity consciousness, we speak our word, and our word has power. And the word that we are speaking right now is healing. Healing, meaning wholeness. Healing for Debbie Hecht. And for our other friends and relatives that may be in need of that. So I invite those of you here on the Lanai to quietly speak the names of anyone you know that you feel would benefit and appreciate this healing energy we're generating. Jeff, our sound tech, would be one. The next step is that we say thank you. Thank you, God, for this healing which already has been accomplished on, in consciousness. And feel that thankfulness. And the final step is release knowing that it is done and we release any worry, anxiety, concern that we had around this situation. We release the need to know exactly when and how the healing is going to manifest. It's covered. It's done. Amen. Thank you all for participating in that. Okay, another song, please. Okay. Aloha, everyone. Mahina. This is Christy. Um, I think we're going to wake it up just a little bit. We've been, uh, Christy and I have been playing music together for a long time, longer than we haven't actually at this point in our lives. <clears throat> and so we're just kind of going back and touching back some of our things and memorable to us and to you folks too. So sing along if you like or clap along or whatever. Just enjoy. And this one should take you back. Too. Sometimes I'm right that I could be wrong. My own beliefs are in my song. The butcher, the banker, the drummer, and then makes no difference when right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I am every 
That could have some new applications today, couldn't it? You know, different reasons why people imagine they're not in unity with one another. <laughs> well, nice. You may notice we're going to be having a little more music than usual as part of this morning's service since um, we uh, don't have a speaker. So we're... I'm so grateful that uh, Mahina and Christy are up for that. <laughs> so my next role as facilitator is to um, welcome you to New Thought Center and tell you a little bit about New Thought Center. Most of the people here on the line, Lanai don't really need this, but perhaps there's someone tuning in that isn't so familiar with, with our group or our history. But anyway, I, I thank you all that are physically present. I thank you for wearing your mask and um, the board of trustees feels this practice is still appropriate. We want to maintain a safe environment as the Delta variant recedes. It's down to, according to the morning paper, 333 active cases in, when we had to shut down in uh, September, it was approaching 2,000. It was kind of scary, but it's, I'm glad it's heading in the right direction. We're grateful to be home again on our beautiful Lanai and hope to continue our in-person meetings without interruption uh, from this point. And please note that those of us in the front are committed to wearing our masks also, except when we um, have a speaking part, speaking, or in the case of the musicians, singing. And there's also extra space separating us from the rest of the congregation, which you can't see if you're watching this by live stream. Uh, so as far as New Thought, the thing that's most special at this particular point in the history of New Thought Center is that we, less than a month ago, we passed our 50-year milestone. So we're, we've embarked on our second half century of New Thought Center here in Hawaii, in Kona. So that's pretty Pretty special. 
And uh, we define our mission as being to provide a sanctuary of aloha for the nourishment, development, and evolution of each individual's unique spiritual path. Um, our, the, the people who planted the seed, which grew into New Thought Center, uh, they, the, that original church was actually called Religious Science Church of Hawaii. And um, a few months ago, we had a Sunday that we devoted to our uh, learning more about our roots. And Virginia Halliday, who was one of the founders, um, graced us with her presence. And that's available on YouTube if anyone missed it and wants to check it out. She was one of those people that was there in 1971 and, and signed the papers. And I think she was the first secretary of the, the church. And we've gone through three or four name changes and uh, our different meeting places. But now we're more or less rooted because um, we actually purchased our meeting place in 2010 and Pomaika'i Kulon was president then, and she did a sharing, kind of um, shedding light on that special time in, in our history, which is also available on our YouTube channel. Um, so there we, from 71 until today, we've held Sunday services con almost continuously um, in Keho uh, for about the first 30 years, and then since 1999 here in Kealakakua. And because of the challenges of the pandemic, we have also developed the technical skills to hold services online when we can't meet in a physical location. We're affiliated with International New Thought Alliance. That's kind of our connection with the wider world. And um, if you know anything about unity or religious science or centers for spiritual living, um, th that's philosophically we're we're close to those um, groups. So I think that's enough introduction of New Thought Center. And when we're able to meet again in an uninhibited way without our having to um, have special rules. At this point, what we would do is pass around our handheld mic and invite each of you to introduce yourself and share some word or phrase on a, a topic of, of interest. Um, we aren't supposed to pass things yet, so that's why we aren't doing that part of our service. But there will be an opportunity for some sharing um, in a little while uh, since we um, don't have a speaker. And I hope that you're, you're up for it. I'll give you more details later. But at this point, we'll have some more music from Mahina and Christy. Okay. So we'd like to do a song for you entitled Laie Kavai. <clears throat> oh, it's a little early to sing these songs. <laughs> My voice. Oh. Um, Laie Kavai is a, a legend. And she is a li'i. She is royalty. She is um, the beauty of the Polynesian paradise. She is In this, in this particular case, she's here on this island and she has dreamed her mate. And like so many of our Hawaiian legends, it's on the far end of the island chain. And so the, the big story, which I'm not going to tell you, of course, right now, but the big legends are about the voyage, the bringing, all the things that pass in his coming all the way from Kauai to this island. So she says she can be found there. She is the beauty of paradise. She rests on the wings of the birds as she awaits his coming. This type of thing. It's just a very pretty melody. 
Anybody know the hula? Get up and dance wherever you are. gave me chicken skin. You know, when they started singing, the prayer flags in the back went crazy. It was like the spirits were happy. 
for many years I was puzzled about this phrase that I heard at the end, towards the end of many Hawaiian songs, Haina mai ana kapuana. And I was, uh, as, as a language teacher, I had this certain stage of my career where I was partnering with other people who knew languages I didn't, um, including Hawaiian. And I was like the teacher of record and the other person was like, I don't know, native language assistant or something. That was who actually knew the language, right? But I helped plan the lessons and I asked the Hawaiian kumu I was working with, because we would give the children like a, a short um, phrase or saying often as, as part of the warm up for the class. I said, well, could we do this one? Because it's puzzled me for years. And she said it means, now Malia, I mean, Mahina, you can correct me if I haven't got it quite right, but I think it was something like, may the echo of our song be heard. Is that? You can you, interpret it that way. Tell again. I'm, can you tell, talk in your microphone? Yeah. It's, it's simply saying, and that's a nice way to put it. I like that. I hadn't heard it put exactly that way. But to, to speak again of what I have just told you, to retell the story, to rephrase, to tell ah. it again. Hyena, we're saying it, we're reminding you of the story that I just told you. Hyena, this is the end of my tale about whatever it is you just told about. So it's telling you that this is the end. We're putting it in a nutshell now about and whatever it was that you were presenting, a song or chant or however. Thank you. Ooh. So normally um, the next thing we would do is the invite people to share their miracles and ordinaries. But because um, our main thing today is going to be sharing, individual sharing, um, uh, I'm going to kind of merge those two. So when we get to the gratitude sharing, if you have a miracle that sort of doesn't quite fit in that category, that's okay. You can, you can share that too. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to the announcements of what's coming up in the future. And then we'll do the offer, offertory and the offering. Okay, so that's, I know it's changing things around, but there's a reason for it. Okay, so uh, what, what's coming up in the next, the next two weeks on our Sunday service, uh, November 14th, we will welcome Aria Lorenz, it will be her first time speaking for New Thought, and she's uh, a teacher for Omega Institute. Hank Wesselman also had a connection with that organization. Um, so her topic is practical ways to step out of ego reaction into higher self-response. And her music minister will be Lori Callis. On the 21st of November, our speaker will be Dr. Susan Gregg, uh, author of the um, Toltec Way, right? I think that's, I think it's Toltec. Anyway, and many other books. And she lives on the other side of the island. She's presented for us, I think, twice since during the pandemic uh, in virtual ways. Um, but she's looking forward to actually driving across the island and being with us in the body on the 21st of November. Her topic is giving thanks for what is. And music, once again, by Mahina Saunders. Okay, so that's what's coming up these next two weeks. Um, and you can attend in person. You can also watch by live stream as it's happening. And you can watch the YouTube 
video subsequently. We are offering free child care by request. So if you have Keiki, um, give us a, a call by, um, if possible, by Friday so that we can inform the, the child care people. As far as monthly events, we normally have two. The uh, Crystal Bowl Meditation on the first Sunday and the Produce Giveaway on the last Sunday. Um, because the Crystal Bowl Meditation is in our indoor room, um, we uh, are holding off. We, we haven't restarted that yet. So that's on hold due to the Delta surge. We're watching the numbers, hopefully continuing to go down. Um, but the produce giveaway is definitely on. We did it last week. We plan to do it at the end of November as well. It's an outdoor activity. Uh, we have a special event that we're hoping to manifest within the next month or so. Um, our speaker of two weeks ago, Shelly Pearson, uh, is a has the she's a therapist. She has the skills to do past life regression. And she's hoping to do a workshop at New Thought called Visit the Past to Heal the Present. That will be a four-hour workshop uh, with a suggested donation, $30 to $50, sliding scale. And the exact date will be set when 10 people have indicated interest. We're up to five. And the sign-up paper is on the little round table at the in the entryway. If you're not physically with us, but you're watching by YouTube, um, you can um, check the website or the newsletter, and it will tell you um, how to uh, sign up directly with Shelly. Or it's, you're not actually signing up at this point. You're indicating interest, and she also would like to know if people prefer a weekend or a weekday for this four-hour workshop. Okay, and as far as service opportunities, um, the ones we know about now are uh, we, we're going to probably still be doing special celebratory things for close to a year regarding our, our uh, making our first half century. Um, so we'd like to have a, a planning group if, if you would be interested in participating in that. We've done brainstorming or spirit storming, um, but we're ready to move on to the next level of actually, you know, making decisions about what we're going to do and when, you know, set at least tentative dates of these uh, happenings. And the we also um, need a, a, pers a skilled person to recreate our Facebook page. That will help us communicate about these special events we're intending to uh, manifest. And every Sunday we, we have, we need volunteers, um, gre greeters, set up people, clean up. Uh, so if you know you're coming and you're willing to help in some way, uh, let us know. And there's uh, information on the website, the newsletter of, of how to communicate, how to volunteer. One thing you always can do is, if you're on the newsletter list, just reply to the newsletter, and your reply will go directly to the New Thought email, and it will be received, I promise. Finally, we would like to have a, a coordinator for our monthly produce giveaway. Different people have stepped in to help, most, uh, most recently Stephen Goss, but um, if there was one person, you know, they could get really, really good at it and, and even have a title. <laughs> okay, so that's, I believe that, oh, wait, there was one other announcement that's a carryover from last week. Hold on just a second. Our speaker, um, Vayana Vailele, a.k.a. Heather Reynolds, wanted us to know about um, this 
online offering of her uh, kumu, Ali'i Keana Aina. Uh, it's a free online Zoom concert and storytelling session called Ho'olauna. And uh, subsequent to this, um, Kumu Ali'i will be offering a, a series, which won't be free, but probably, you know, you'll find out more about that possibility. But this is an opportunity to get to know him and decide if, if you want to commit to that. And I'm going to hold it up to the screen for the uh, live stream people. Just a sec. So it's tomorrow, November 8th, 1 p.m. And if you want to participate, um, you just have to, you can get the Zoom link by responding mahalo, a N word we all know. And you respond to this email address, viola, W-A-I dot ola, O-L-A-365 at gmail.com. And I, it works because I tried it out. And then within, I don't know, a fairly short time, you'll get back a response, which includes the Zoom link. But I would suggest don't wait until like quarter to one. Do it a little sooner than that. And that one that is is free, and it will include music and storytelling, Hawaiian legends, and whatnot. Okay, so we will now have another song, but this song will be our offertory. So during the time of the music. Those of you who are here on the lanai, one at a time, can make your way to the little table and put your offering in the koa bowl. So, okay, so we're getting our musicians organized. I'm changing the position just slightly. Ah, we're getting better at this text up all the time. Something new to learn. Yeah. Better? That's better. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> we're, we're getting a little better every time. <laughs> Smile. And 
That's great. Thank you. So uh, now we are coming to the part of the service, which is all of you. And there's different ways of participating, depending on whether you're physically present here on the lanai or um, with us by live stream. So if you're here, uh, you are invited to come up one at a time and speak into the microphone, which can be adjusted for short and tall people. Um, and because I'm the facilitator, that's why I'm taking my mask off. But since multiple people will be my, um, besides me, it will be appreciated if, if you will speak through your mask. Um, which kind of works, you know, the mask has a muffling effect, but then the microphone amplifies, so kind of works. And, um, and you can, you know, because we don't have a speaker, and we don't have a huge crowd here, uh, you can probably, within reason, say, speak as long as you want to. I shouldn't say that, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's maybe say probably not more than three minutes. Probably that'd be a good, you know, ranging from 10 seconds to three minutes. <laughs> uh, and I know that some people feel shy of microphones. Um, to make it feel a little less intimidating for the people on the lanai, what's going to happen afterwards is um, the edited version of the video, which will be available continuously on YouTube after today, will not include our personal sharings. I'll, I'll, that's part of the reason I rearranged the order of service so that we could share with the whole world the service up to that point, but then respect the privacy of your sharing. So who you're sharing with is the people you can see and the fairly small number of people that are watching the YouTube as it's happening. Stephen, do you have a way to tell that? I know afterwards I can tell how many people are watching the YouTube, but can you tell right now? Okay, well, based on past experience, it's probably 10 to 12 at most. So in other words, you don't have to feel like you're giving a speech to the United Nations or anything. <laughs> uh, now, for those of you who are watching by live stream right now, uh, I was discussing this with Ramona, our secretary, who's in Seattle now, and she's usually one of the ones watching as it's happening. So what we figured out was live stream people can participate by way of the chat feature of, of YouTube. Um, there's this live chat, and we see it over on the right-hand side. And I just need somebody to um, notice, you know, what people enter into that live chat, and then we can uh, verbally share, you know, read it so that it will be heard by the people here as well. 
Um, did Did you figure something out, Stephen? Oh, thank you, Richard Miller. Okay. Right. So, um, if you've already had a chance to think about what you're grateful for, that's fine. But it's also okay to just come stand in front of the mic microphone and blurt out whatever comes to mind in the moment. But to get everyone in the mood, um, Annie... Bertram has done a little bit of research, and she's going to uh, start us off with uh, a reading that she found meaningful on the subject of gratitude. Thank you, Pasha. So, yes, as I was perusing the Internet uh, over the last couple days, um, trying to find some stories about gratitude. Um, there was one in particular that really touched my heart because it has to do with a child and I'm a retired teacher. So um, I have a special place in my heart for all children. Um, this is written by um, a person named Nate, or I'm sorry, Nick Ortner. And I think he is someone who's the head of the tapping solution, if anybody's ever heard of that before. Uh, and he writes, today I want to share a short story with you about gratitude. A blind, <clears throat> excuse me. a blind boy sat on the steps of a building with a hat by his feet. He held up a sign which read, I am blind, please help. There were only a few coins in the hat, spare change from folks as they hurried past. A man was walking by. He took a few coins from his pocket and dropped them into the hat. He then took the sign, turned it around, and wrote some words. Then he put the sign back in the boy's hand so that everyone who walked by would see the new words. Soon the hat began to fill up. A lot more people were giving money to the blind boy. That afternoon, the man who had changed the sign returned to see how things were going. The boy recognized his footsteps and asked, Were you the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? The man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but I said it in a different way. I wrote, today, I'm going to start crying here, but it's so meaningful. <laughs> today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. Both signs spoke the truth, but the first sign simply said the boy was blind, while the second sign conveyed to everyone walking by how grateful they should be just to be able to see. When your life seems full of troubles, it seems difficult to maintain an attitude of gratitude, doesn't it? All we see are our problems, like a blackened storm cloud casting a dark shadow over our lives. And the times when everything seems to just be going smoothly, we often take these precious moments for granted too, don't we? Caught up in the bliss, comfort, and familiarity of it all, we can simply forget to be thankful. So then, what is gratitude? Simply put, gratitude is a habit. It's a way of looking at the world and all the good things in it. With a feeling of appreciation, regardless of whether or not your current situation is to your liking, gratitude is a heart-centered approach to being at peace with yourself and with all you have. When you practice this feeling of gratitude, it attracts even more great things into your life for which to be grateful. Thank you. 